Hi, this is Brent from tradeguild.blogspot.com and it is August 22nd and uh, we're going to take a look at a couple of uh, stocks that we recently had a uh, couple long calls in. The first one up is STXS and um, we've had really good luck the last couple of days with this stock. Uh, up nine and uh, almost nine and a half percent today broke through a uh, pretty decent level of resistance take a little closer look at it there there's that downtrend line that was in effect just broke through that and um, you can see it down in here it started well actually it stopped making lower lows and started uh, putting in a little bit of a base and made a higher low and just uh, took off from there so if you're in this stock you know at, at this point I don't see any reason to um, to give up that position uh, probably at some point we'll see a pullback to this $11 level um, I would think it's going to uh, start to run out of some steam here pretty soon uh, one of the other ones up today that did real well was uh, CRYO and um, you know it was up uh, as you can see almost 10% today so we've had some pretty good uh, successes with a few of these longs in uh, the last couple of months we've been doing good with the shorts so it's kind of a mixed bag right now. We're kind of um, just waiting to see where this market's going to go. I'll take a quick look at the S&P 500. And, uh, you know, I recommend going over to uh, Brian Shannon's website, Alpha Trends. And he does every day a real comprehensive look at uh, what's going on with those, uh, you know, with the stocks in the S&P 500. But the latest kind of uh, thinking here is that we've got, um, I'm not sure this is how Brian... Uh, is identifying this, but this is how I would identify a head and shoulders bottom more or less, or Kilroy bottom, some people call it. There's a shoulder, the head, and the shoulder. There's the neckline. It's just a flipped over head and shoulders, and it acts as a base. Uh, sometimes we get a pullback to the neckline. Uh, I don't know if that's going to happen in this case. Uh, there's a lot of talk about, you know, is this a rally? Is this a, a pullback? And in my opinion, you know, what we're seeing right now is the stock is just marking time. Uh, consolidating sideways and if we look at a um, there's a half an hour chart you can see the last three days it's just in this trading zone uh, you know if we look at a five minute chart it's kind of interesting today when the uh, Chicago Fed president came out and spoke we had a um, a little miniature head and shoulders top on the intraday chart and we'll see these um, in in you know daily charts weekly charts intraday charts and and there it is up there so there's the shoulder there's the head there's the shoulder the neckline and a plunge and, and this really carried much further than the measuring implications would suggest but the catalyst for this plunge right here was the Chicago Fed uh, president saying that you know uh, words to the effect that they may have to raise interest rates again over inflation concerns and that was kind of a theme that we were talking about last week that this rally might be a little bit overdone because you know the market was acting like we've really turned a corner on inflation and you know we're just in the early stages of preliminary data and there's still rage weight uh, <laughs> wage rate increases and um, you know those are adding inflationary pressures and then energy as well so uh, it remains to be seen but for the moment it looks like the S&P is just kind of marking time here in this sideways consolidation and uh, you know there's two ways it can consolidate it can consolidate down uh, price wise or it can go uh, left to right you know and, and uh, consolidate sideways time wise but what we're definitely seeing if I can find the right chart here uh, there we go uh, forget about all the clutter just look at this bottom window down here and basically what I'm showing you in, in uh, red and gray is stochastics and yellow is RSI and they're all up here you know way oversold so this market still has a ways to go in uh, kind of relieving this over uh, I'm sorry overbought they're overbought not oversold so it has a ways to go in relieving this condition so we'll see what happens but so far so good it's helped you know hold up pretty well and uh, on Sunday I did a little post called summer rallies and uh, what the typical summer rally is about 9.4 percent from the from the bottoms in may june or and uh, july so i think you know taking that measuring implication we could certainly take out this may high in the s p 500. that being said let's uh go ahead and take a look at a couple ideas 
for uh, long positions. First up is JDSU, which is uh, JDS Uniphase. And um, down here you see this red moving average is the 22. It's crossing over that yellow 50-day moving average. And I'm, I'm not going to get real into depth here. These are just some ideas I'm throwing out um, for you to take a look at. So if we see something starting to look uh, really hot, then we'll do an in-depth analysis. But basically uh, what I was watching develop in this chart is this um, MACD divergence here. Uh, see it's sloping upwards while price was heading down. So that was suggesting a bottom was in order, a bottom was on the way. And uh, of course we saw that. If we take a look here at the candlestick chart. Um, you know, what, let me draw some trend lines here. We saw this little process happen. This was the base, uh, former support acting as resistance, and we got the breakthrough uh, on decent volume, nothing spectacular, but uh, it's kind of consolidating now in this little um, flag type of, or miniature pennant type of formation. It's a very small consolidation. So, you know, ideally I'd like to see it pull back a little bit more to uh, feel safe about buying that. But our next uh, zone of resistance is going to be right in this level, around 270, 275 in there, and then we're going to come up to about the 320 level. Uh, it's entirely likely that we see a, a stair-stepping type of thing where it breaks through this level and pulls back, and that's good because we, you know it gives us opportunities to buy uh, the stock. So let's take a look at another one, and this is TLB, and um, this was on the blog. Uh, I think early August, maybe late, even late July. I think early August, though. Basically, what we're seeing here is a, a, a pennant formation that took place right there. And there's the breakout, like we always talk about as it comes close to this apex. It's like a coiled spring, more or less. And there's the breakout. And it looks like, you know, it, it's pulled back a, a fairly decent amount of that breakout. And there's going to be a little bit of support off of this rising window gap actually right there. So we saw support on this day, support on this day. So I think this is a, a pretty decent little area to buy. Um, it looks like it's kind of running out of downside momentum here with this uh, star or doji actually. And uh, the upside is not bad here. I think, uh, you know, what we saw come into play was this resistance level right in here around 24 from this little area in, in here and all the way back here. So I think once we uh, break 24, and I think that will probably happen, then uh, I think we'll probably see a, a test of the, the year highs up here around 28, 29. So that's one to keep an eye on. I think I have time for one more long in this video, and this is uh, Lava, L-A-V-A, Magma Design Automation. And again, this is one that's been on the blog recently, and it broke out. And basically what we were looking at was this trading uh, zone here. This was acting as a base. so. You can see uh, this is just all rectangular consolidation. Um, sometimes these are big continuation patterns. Sometimes they're tops. Sometimes they're bottoms. Uh, we got the breakout though, and it returned pretty much to that level. So if it holds, you know, above this 725 in here, and it pulls back with a Doji or a Star or something, this is you know a nice position to enter or to add to. There's the big volume on the breakout, and uh, if you can take a, a closer look there the volume, uh, relatively speaking, to the breakout has been less. But maybe we get another day of pullback, maybe we get a, a doji or a star in here. So that's what I would look for. I wouldn't just jump right in, but just you know, wait for the trade to really set up for you. Um, other than that, I, I think it looks pretty good. There's that 50-day uh, moving average you can see was flattening out, and that red 22-day uh, moving average crossing over. So that's a buy signal, and uh, all in all, I think this looks uh, pretty good. So I am going to uh, finish this video up and I'm going to bring you another one real quick with uh, a couple short ideas. So we'll be right back.